here and welcome back to changeling we're here chapter six the night of samhain crazy shit gonna happen right <laughs> october 31st halloween arrived without much fanfare i didn't wake to spec spe specters lurking in my room or beating down my window to get in to eat me it was just a normal morning i rubbed my eyes and climbed out of bed so trying to shake off the final throes of sleep it was until the cold air hit my skin that I really noticed the faint thrum of energy in the air. It was hard to put into words exactly what it was like, but I imagined it was how one might feel standing close to a really strong electromagnetic magnetic field or something. There was a sort of vibration in the air, something I would that I could definitely feel and could almost hear. My skin felt strangely tingly and every hair stood on, on end as I rubbed my arms to rid myself of the feeling of ants crawling over me. When I peeked out the window, everything looked totally normal. No openly unnatural things going on as far as I could see. Then again, it apparently, it apparently wasn't until sundown that things got a bit intense. I was going to reserve judgment until then. That feeling though was definitely new. Is it going to be like this all day? If it was, I might go a bit mad before it was all over. That unhappy thought in mind, I quickly got dressed and went to my desk to find my journal. I feel like the bad shit doesn't happen until night anyway. If this kind of thing happened multiple times per year, I wanted to check exactly what happened so I would be more prepared next time. Now that I thought there was much I could do to prepare for annoying skin tingle, I looked up from my writing frown at the door, wondering if I could pretend I was asleep, but it, op it opened before I could respond anyway. <laughs> Hi, Spencer. Spencer stepped inside. Hey, Chico, Mom wants you to come down for breakfast. He wor worded that nicer than usual. Tell her I'll be down in a minute. He took a step closer, frowning at me. What are you doing? Just writing myself a note so I don't forget something. Which wasn't a complete lie. Since I scowled down at my notebook, his frown deepened as he took a step closer, eyes narrowing. What is... I flipped the journal shut and glared up at him. Do you mind? What was that? None of your business. Can you please go away? I'll be down in a minute. He gave me a long, serious look before turning on his heel and leaving. Did he see that? No, he definitely saw it. I dropped my fingers on the notebook anxiously. I was pretty sure he didn't remember our little language. At least he told me that he didn't, and I believed him at the time. Too late to worry about it now. I just had to make sure to keep it out of sight going forward. I put the journal in the desk drawer and started downstairs for breakfast. Good morning, honey. Happy Halloween. I made a disinterested noise as I poured myself some coffee and grabbed a plate of bacon and eggs. Do you have plans for tonight? No, of course not. Would you even let me go if I wanted to? Well, I thought you might have plans with that cute boy, Corbin. I glared at her. What? You like him, don't you? She leaned on the counter and grinned at me. He's really cute. Wait, who is? <laughs> Dad, protect. No one. He's a flirty airhead who can't walk two steps without hurting himself. What's the like? She just smiled wider at me. I felt my cheeks go warm under her scrut scrutiny and tried to focus on my coffee. You definitely like him. Uh, maybe I do, I think. <laughs> just as a friend. I do not like him. No, maybe I do. What are we gonna do about it? As I'm covering up Mark. Uh, oh, I almost hit I do not like him. Holy shit. Maybe I do. I think. Wait, what? Who do you like? <laughs> the level of panic in his voice was almost amusing. Almost. Don't read too much into that. We're just friends. We go to the same club. That's it. But he obviously likes you too. That stood up suddenly and gripped me tightly by the shoulders. Who? is this person oh lord we're just classmates mom leaned against that shoulder grinning at us both and that's why he rushed over the moment he thought you were mad at him which is so fucking cute what when where was i far away thankfully the shrug dancing off my sho my arms not shoulders and sidled away from him he looked distressingly upset again don't read too much into it that's just how corvin is Mom sighed and reached over to pat my cheek gently. It's okay to like a boy, Michiko. It's okay to, to date people. That's what high school girls do. It's definitely not okay. But it's okay for you to do it to mom, dad. I don't have to date somebody, someone to be happy. Courtney, listen to your daughter. She is wise beyond, <laughs> beyond her years. Oh, for God's sake, Shane, calm down. She's not a little girl anymore. Dad muttered something to himself and snatched a slice of bacon off his plate, buying into it angrily as the rest of laughter at his pouting. And of course, you don't have to date to be happy. I just would love to see you go on dates and go to parties. You spent the last few years barely going out at all. You and Spencer both. I worry about you. You're, you're worried that we're like just cave monsters my dad and mom were not worried they were actually happy <laughs> there's nothing to worry about just because i don't have a boyfriend 
I can't speak for Spencer, but I'm perfectly happy with the way things are. And if there's ever anyone I want to date, I will. Even if it gives Dad an aneurysm. He glared at me from the table, but I just smirked at him. Well, for the record, I think Corbin seems like a very nice young man. I will bear in mind that he has your approval. He doesn't have mine yet. I couldn't decide if meeting between if a meeting between those two would be hilariously worth it or just headache inducing. Well, if you're staying home tonight, maybe you should try to throw together a quick costume. It would be a shame to hand out candy without like, dressing up. What the fuck? No, what? No thanks. Party pooper. Yeah, yeah. She loved the kitchen and I just rolled my eyes after her. I couldn't believe she was really going to make me do the whole candy thing. I didn't know why she got such a kick out of it. So, about this Corbin guy. <laughs> no. No, we're not doing that. I fled back to the stairs. I'm just going to ask Spencer if you won't tell me. I was laughing when I finally retreated back to my room. Dad worried way too much, still thinking about what Mom had said. It wasn't that I never wanted to date someone. It was just... Well, I guess Corbin wasn't the only one who had trouble, trouble getting close to people. I picked up my phone off my desk, noticing the drawer with my journal was still open. I thought I'd shut that. I quickly shut it and checked my phone. Spencer, you're horrible. Real horrible at putting things back how it should look like. One text. Hey Michiko, wanted to check in and see how you were doing today. Everything's fine here, nothing to report. You okay too? No problems here. I carry my phone over to the window to peek outside. Everything still looked the same. The trees in the empty lot across the street swayed gently in the breeze. Everything was sunny and looked appropriately October-y. There was some movement in the tall grass and I could just make out a white, linky shape hopping around there. Someone's dog. It was too far away to see it well, but every few minutes it would pop its head up and look around before going back to jumping in the grass. <laughs> Wait, what? What is that? Somehow I got an uncomfortable feeling watching it. I let the curtain fall back in place and stepped away from the window. I might just be on edge from the weird energy in the air. But from everything that's happened recently. I grabbed a sketchbook and flopped onto my bed, deciding to draw for a while to get my mind off of it. The day passed entirely without incident, but that tingly energy did definitely began to slowly increase toward nightfall. As the sun headed toward the horizon, the tingling sensation got stronger and stronger. But if it, I just realized I forgot to mention how like we saw the blob in many routes and then the old lady in Mark's route. I think the arise is what we see in um, Corbin's route, which isn't that scary, so that's great. Everybody else was scary. <laughs> As I deal with, when it, then it would be fine, and it seemed it would be. Ali's wards were either working or everyone had overreacted about all the danger. But then sundown hasn't arrived yet, and it was maybe an hour before that when mom called me downstairs. Chico, can you come downstairs to help? I didn't even try to argue this time. I trudged down to help with an inevitably tedious job of handing out candy to an assortment of witches, ghouls, goblins, and superheroes in cheap costumes. You're not even making an attempt at costume. Mom, you're not in costume. Nope. You're such a Scrooge. That's for Christmas. Well, I'm pleased to see you're getting a head start. You know me, I like to be prepared. Just hand the candy out. Your father's in the kitchen making punch, and I need to make sure it stays alcohol-free. My underage brother and I thank you. I was going to point out that I highly doubt anyone still even did the door-to-door -door thing when the doorbell rang, absolutely obliterating my main argument. As she disappeared into the kitchen, I grumbled under my breath and went to face a gaggle of colorful kids <laughs> staring up at me from an assortment of masks and sparkly head accessories. A few anxious moms were hanging back at the depth back at the, at the bottom of the steps, watching me put a piece of chocolate into each grinny pumpkin. I resisted the urge to dump the entire bowl in a single pumpkin, but only because I knew mom had more anyway. It was a genius shock that, with all the major events at shopping centers around town, our neighborhood still was this old school. It was annoying, but I don't know. There was a tinge of nostalgia as well, not enough to make me enjoy it, but I remember how much fun it had been as a kid. I did not. Mm -mm. I was so nervous to go up to any door and ask for candy. Don't you guys think that's weird? <laughs> I guess it will hurt to help bum out for a while. As the first group group skittered down the porch, another one walked up. It amazed me how creative some Halloween, Halloween costumes were these days for children. Wait, is that even... That isn't a costume? No, no it's not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. What are you doing? What are you doing out here? It's a bit too early, don't you think? <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't you think? The last kid in the group was lagging behind the others a bit. I thought it was a weird costume, but quickly I realized there was something actually sitting on his shoulders. Shock rooted me to the spot and it took a moment to realize that the other kids were waiting on me. I quickly dropped something in each bucket, trying to keep an eye on that thing without making eye contact. Is that what I think it is? I could see it more clearly this time, but what if it was Kara's dream, then... What was it doing on that kid's shoulder? No one else paid any attention to it, of course. Yeah, I wish I could see it either. It was staring right at me. Every time I reached through the door to give out the candy, I knew that at least part of me was leaving the san sensitivity of Ali's barrier. It was terrifying, but not as terrifying as wondering what it was doing to the child it had attached itself to. Was it possessing him? Was it going to possess him? I thought a ride went after their hopes, not random people. Then again, that one had attacked me. A cold chill went through me. Wait. That thing isn't here because of me, is it? Because of that thing that happened at school. When I got to the last child in the line, the, the child, sorry. When I got to the last child in the lineup, I took a deep breath and quickly reached across the threshold to drop the chocolate in his bucket before yanking my arm back to safety. It took every bit of willpower I had to not jump back and scream when the thing reached a hand out toward the door, toward me. I don't know if it was the barrier or if it just changed its mind, but it withdrew its hand. The kids soon retreated back down the walk, taking the creature with them. I started to shut the door, but chanced once the last look. It had turned its head all the way around in a spooky owl-like fashion. We made eye contact and half expected it to jump off the kid and come lopping back up the sidewalk to the house. But it just stared at me until the kids were beyond the edge of the fence. I shut the door, letting the shivering take over. I went to get that pouch Allie left on my table. I need to call someone. Corvin, I need to call Corvin. I set the bull down with shaking hands and was just about to get my phone when the doorbell rang again. I didn't want to open it, but mom would kill me if I left the kids waiting. I took a deep breath and peeked outside to find Corvin and Danny standing there. Relief flooded me. How does Corvin always manage to show up right when I needed him? I don't know. It's like, oh, you got a cute new scarf. An outfit. Is that an outfit? I know it's a new scarf. <laughs> I yanked the door open without a second thought, doing my best to play it cool. Two of the tallest third graders I've ever seen. <laughs> I really like that choice. I could have hugged Corvin at this point. I was so relieved to see him, but I had to play it cool. Because there was no way I was throwing myself at him with Danny there. I mean, I could hug them both at the same time. Like, oh my god, I just saw the craziest shit. <laughs> I took a deep breath. You two are the tallest third graders I've ever seen. I glanced at my bowl of treats. Do you like milk or dark chocolate? What? Really? You're not going to say anything about my costume? Are you supposed to be like a Ravenclaw or something? I don't know. Literally, the only thing <laughs> different is the scarf. Okay, so I did notice. Okay. It counts? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, you're really no fun at all sometimes. I mean, at least you attempted. That's really cute. That's so cute. That said, I was kind of hoping you'd be wearing a cute little pixie costume. Uh, the fuck? <laughs> I started to shut the door with my foot. Wait, wait, wait. I just thought you'd look cute in a mini skirt. I do. <laughs> That's even worse. I started to shut the door faster. Danny put his hand up to stop me too. Traitor. Anyway, since we were checking out this street, we thought we'd at least stop by to make sure everything was fine here. Perfectly nothing unusual, except the weird creepy thing that I just saw on some kid's shoulder and that may have tried to get in the house a few minutes ago. What? I think it was um a ride from earlier this week. Corbin looked visibly concerned at that. It was here. Yeah? What a ride is this? Oh shoot, I forgot I wasn't supposed to say anything. Um, just one that's been lurking around for a while. One of yours. No, no, not mine. <laughs> then why is it coming here? Gorin frowned but didn't answer. You said to try to get in, are you okay? Well, yeah, I mean, with the words Ali set up, it's not like it go could get far. But it probably scared you. Oh, you're so kind to me. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it was unsettling, but I'm fine. I was literally about to call you, but, well, here you are. I guess we have good timing then. <laughs> Danny's like, hello, please fill me in. I'm worried about that kid it was sitting on. It probably was just trying to hitch a ride to my house. He bit his lip and looked away. Danny, you should probably find Elliot and stick with him for the rest of the night. It looks like I'm going to be busy. Danny looked from me to Corbin carefully, then sighed and pulled out his phone. Not a problem, we were planning to meet up with him anyway. He stepped off the porch, apparently sending a text to Elliot. He used the opportunity to grab Corbin's arm. What is going on? Why is that thing showing up at my house? I've noticed that he's not wearing his glasses anymore. <laughs> I know you know. At school, I know it wasn't just a coincidence that he asked me to help you that day. Did you know it was going to attack me? Did you know it was going to follow me home? Corbin grabbed me by the shoulders and gave me a serious look. I didn't know it was already stalking your house. 
Alrighty, so you did expect it to come here. Uh, just be sure you don't leave your house this evening. That's it, no answers. I'm sorry, I can't. He released me and stepped away. So he wasn't going to tell me anything. I was the one in danger and I didn't get a single answer. I watched him step off the porch, feeling both worried and frustrated. <laughs> Please make sure the kid's okay. That kid is okay. If it wanted to do anything to the kid, it would have already done it. Corbin, please be careful out there. Ugh. I quickly followed him, grabbing his sleeve before he got more than a few steps from the porch. Michiko, I literally said, just said not to leave the house. I know. I'm stubborn. If you didn't know, based on Mark's route, I'm quite stubborn. Corbin, please be careful out there. I mean, I'm irritated at you right now. Don't think I'm not. I know something more is going on than what you're telling me. Michiko, but be careful. Finding that thing didn't go so well last time worried about me of course i am don't act like it's a huge shock jeez i'll be careful and you're off the hook for now but you owe me an explanation after uh, about all this but don't think i'm going to let you forget that corbin just smiled that same slightly sad smile that reared its head sometimes i'll look forward to it that that isn't something you look forward to jeez corbin suddenly pulled me into a hug my face heated up as it pressed into his scarf thank you i'll be careful oh i love hugs Yep, yeah, well, you better. I returned the hug briefly before pulling away. Okay, I'm going back to hide, my, <laughs> hide in my fortress again. I'll see you later. Yeah, yeah. Danny. He looked up from where he was standing near the end of the driveway. I waved. Tell Elliot I said hi. I will. Or Elliot was already hearing me. Elliot is literally somewhere next door. I left him there and went back inside. I had barely gotten inside when Spencer appeared in the foyer looking as cranky as always. What do you want, bro? Whatever you want, you're gonna have to hold it <laughs> until next episode. As I'm covering Mark, I'm so sorry, Mark. Um, Corbin, Corbin, slowly, slowly getting attached to me. Um, I, I meant I'm slowly getting attached to Corbin. <laughs> other, other way around. It's gonna make me nervous because we still have yet to to learn that we are changeling. So this route could take a turn eventually. So anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.